We're going to get Lou Ridgway on. So on three, make him feel very welcome. One, two, three, go! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Lou Ridgway! How are we doing, Liverpool? It is lovely to be a fucking love Liverpool. I'm doing this new thing at the minute where I'm trying to stay happy and positive all the time. And it's, it, it is hard. Um, mostly because not all the gigs are here. Um, sometimes you have to gig in horrible places like Birkenhead. Um, but, no, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay positive and trying to stay happy. And basically, what spurred me on to it was, um, over the last three years, I've kind of, basically, been on a bit of a personal journey and had a bit of a personal transformation. Started during COVID and I've stuck with it. Basically, during COVID, I decided to use all the time I had for personal growth. <laughs> you quick, Liverpool. <laughs> Seven stone, if we're putting numbers on it. Uh, <laughs> seven stone. To put seven stone into perspective, seven stone is the average weight of a tumble dryer. <laughs> or a baby hippopotamus. <laughs> so effectively, what I did with my lockdown was pick up a baby hippopotamus and never put it down. I bought some fun facts about baby hippopotamus. Fact number one, baby hippopotamus is born with its eyes wide open and instantly has the ability to walk, which makes it vastly better than all my mates' shit kids. They don't like it when you point that out at family barbecues. To be fair, I've got, I've got a mate, Toby. He's a nice guy, but he's a bit of a hipster. And uh, he was like... Oh, the baby Felix, the other day, the cat walked across the room and he went, oh, 10 months old. And I said, Toby, did you know that a baby hippopotamus is born with its eyes wide open and the ability to walk? And he said, why are you trying to belittle my baby's achievements, you fat prick? <laughs> and I don't like Toby for one major reason. One, he named his baby Felix and his cat George. And that is some backwards hipster shit I am not on board with. I kind of overreacted though. I did say, well, Toby, it's a good job your son was born without his eyes wide open and without the ability to walk because he'd take one look at you and probably fuck off. <laughs> Fun fact number two about baby hippopotamus. <laughs> baby hippopotamus will go up to a crocodile while a crocodile's sunbathing and chew on its tail because it helps with teething. And the crocodile does fuck all because he respects the fact that the hippos are as fuck. <laughs> Fun fact number three about the baby hippopotamus. If you pick up a baby hippopotamus, stuff it under your shirt, and carry it round for three years, it will fucking ruin your back. And every time you go to have sex, your girlfriend will have a headache. <laughs> don't, don't, don't army. Don't army, you haven't seen her. Um, <laughs> do we have anyone who's into the gym or fitness or anything in tonight? Who, who? I can't see. It's pitch black, but it's. You look. You look like a. You look like a well in shape shadow. Um, what's your name? What's your name? Lauren. Lauren. Um, how often do you go to the gym? Four. To, fuck off. That's a week. Wow. So would you say you are? You're obviously quite in good shape. Lauren, can I ask you some fitness questions that might save my life? Lauren, would you say, as a super fit person who goes to the gym four to five times a week, you could pick up a baby hippopotamus <laughs> and never put it down? No, would you say it's quite an extreme workout? Then why do I look like this? <laughs> 
It is a bit of a problem though, because I'm new fat and I'm not like I'm not generationally fat or been fat for very long, so I'm learning. And I'm at a bit, bit of an impasse in my life. And I've got to make a decision because I want to start having sex again. <laughs> so I've got two choices. I either go to the gym with Megan, cost 50 pounds a month, or I get fat enough to become a fetish. Bit of a warning as well. Like, I don't want to tell people how to live their life, but I'm going to give you a reason why not to gain rapid weight gain. So what, what happened was, when I was in my early 20s, I was actually in good shape. I was like 12 stone, had a bit of a six pack. I wasn't bad. I'm not, I'm not. I know like fat people always go, oh, I was a stunner. I was fucking good looking. <laughs> and I had, I had a job, which was good at 21. And I saved all my money up for months and months. And I decided I wanted my whole back tattooed, you know, for like the summer you take it off and... <laughs> Tattoos were all the rage in the early 2000s. I thought, I'm on a winner here. And I did it. And I found a really good tattoo artist. And he gave me the most amazing tattoo. Basically, I had a full Japanese back piece because I'm really culturally sensitive. And, <laughs> and it looked amazing. It was a samurai stood on top, of, like in a kimono, stood on top of a dragon. Just looking out all stoic. <laughs> Problem is, with rapid weight gain, it now looks like Robert De Niro in a dressing gown stood on top of an iguana. <laughs> Just <laughs> Also, I know I'm fat, and I'm allowed to say fat. I know that's a trigger word, but it's like it's fat people's N words, so I'm allowed to say it. Um, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say the N word. Doesn't matter how fat they are. Uh, <laughs> So, right. <laughs> Stop it now. This is how you get cancelled. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to speak on behalf of all fat people. I don't. <clears throat> but I'm gonna. So, if you give anyone that's overweight, like the Matrix-style option, you know the red and the blue pill? And you said to them, if you take the red pill now, you'll be thin overnight and you'll stay thin forever. Or, you take the blue pill... You'll be fat for the rest of your life. I guarantee you every single overweight person takes the red pill. And then they eat the blue pill because we have a problem with portion control. <laughs> no, I, d I did. I gained a lot of weight um, during lockdown through stress because, as we all know, stress is fucking delicious. Um, <laughs> I spent lockdown with my partner. Um, we've been together... Seven and a half years now. Um, sadly, we, we don't have kids. Um, it, is, it, is, it is a sad thing. Um, we don't have kids, uh, mostly because I keep pulling out. Um, <laughs> two reasons for that. One, we're just content, you know, being fucking happy. Um, <laughs> and two, I read a survey once that said from the ages of zero... To 18, it costs £200,000 to raise a child in the UK. £200,000, which means every time I pull out, I save £200,000. <laughs> Book Martin Lewis, I'm the money saving expert. <laughs> Book Martin Lewis anyway, because he's only famous for being a tight. Um, he says really goofy things like, oh, with these 67 easy steps, I can save you £6.50 a year on your gas and electric. Really, Martin? I could save you two hundred grand with one step. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I couldn't think of someone I'd pay two hundred grand to put it in, let alone leave it in. <laughs> there is one person, but I think my girlfriend had noticed I'd sold the house. And that her sister got £200,000. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been lovely. I've been Lou Ridgway. Thank you very much.